Bacall, 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 Bacon. Hi everyone, it's Emma. And today I'm filming my book expo in Bacon, Book Hall. I had to say book so many times to explain that. Last week I was at Book Expo and Book Con, and obviously I got a lot of books. It was my first ever experience with Book Expo. I did go to Book Con last year, but it is much different when you're in New York for like a week and in the convention center for like five days. I had a wonderful first Book Expo. It was such a cool experience. I had all these opportunities, not to mention all the friends I got to hang out with all week long. I got to hang out with lots of friends that I haven't seen for a while and then make some new friends and meet some internet friends and it was just such a good old time. So much fun and I got so many books. I had intended to wait to put up this book haul until after my vlog. However, I have been reading non-stop. I already finished one of the arcs that I got at Book Expo. So before I went any further, because I'm in such a reading mood, I wanted to haul these books so that y'all know that I have them and I'm reading them. Yes. So I'm going to start with the book that I have already read, A Very Large Expanse of the Sea by Tahir Mafi. It does not have a cover yet, so that's why it's just blurbs on the front. I read this in about two and a half days and I was pacing myself because I knew I was going to be so sad when it ended. It was one of those experiences where I related to the main character so much. I think Tahara Mafi just must be a similar personality to me or like someone that she loves must be really similar to me because I always relate to her character so so much which of course is why she's my favorite author. So this book is about a post 9-11 Muslim teenage girl. She has had to move all around the country and join different schools and at each one she doesn't really set down roots. She doesn't really make friends because she is kind of in this self-protective mode because of how terribly she is treated because of all the racism post 9-11. We waited like two and a half hours to get this arc because there were only 75 of them and I'm so so happy that I waited that long because I loved it. I think the reason that I loved it so much is because this girl is different from me in ethnicity, in religion, in her circumstances, but I related to her so much and I understood her feelings so much and when you can connect people like that, that is just one of my favorite things. The idea that suffering is universal and if you have experienced something terrible, you can be compassionate to someone else who has experienced something terrible. That is just such good writing to me. I just love that. Not to mention the fact that it was so cool to read about this girl who is like working through all her anger and she kind of uses breakdancing as like an outlet. It also has a really good romance, but that is just a side note. Yes, I loved it. I know this is a book haul, but it turned into a review because I just love this book so much. I am going to do a full review once the book actually comes out, but it doesn't come out until October 18th. So when it comes out, I will reread it in the finished copy and give you guys a review. I did get this one signed by Tahara and it was so nice to meet her and see her again. She's just so lovely and beautiful, sweet and kind and I love her. The next book that I got is City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab. This is V.E. Schwab's new middle grade book and it comes out August 28th. It is about this girl who almost drowned and ever since the accident she has been able to like pull back the veil that separates the living from the dead so she can see ghosts. That is pretty much all I know about it. I just know that it's Victoria Schwab and I'm so excited to read a Victoria Schwab middle grade and for it to be super creepy and dark because dark middle grades are my fave. I didn't get this one signed. We actually missed her signing but it's okay. I love it anyways. I'm so excited to read it. Next, next, next is another one that I waited a pretty long time in line for. It is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. This arc is pretty hard to find. Like I waited in line twice for it. The first time they actually ran out and we didn't get it. And then the second time I waited like maybe an hour and a half. It's just a rare arc, I feel like, or maybe everyone just wants it. So it seems like it's rare. But I did get it signed and I got to meet Becky and Adam again. I think I've met them both before. This is a YA contemporary and it also comes out on October 18th. I believe it is about these two boys who are attracted to each other or like have some kind of connection but circumstances or fate keeps pulling them apart so they're trying to decide if they should like 
work through these obstacles to be together if they're meant to be together or if it's just not meant to be and they need to give up. I'm really interested to see with this one if the tone is more like Adam's books or Becky's books because Becky writes like cute contemporary and Adam writes sad contemporary so I'm curious to see if this is like a really sad one or a really cutesy one or if they somehow merged it together. I don't know. This is definitely going to be one of my upcoming reads as well. Then I got an arc of The Last Life of Prince Alistair, which is the second book following the Tales of Prosper Redding. It is Alexandra Bracken's middle grade series. This one comes out... Oh my gosh, this one doesn't come out till February 2019. I did not know that it was so long until this one came out, and I'm really, really grateful that I got it. I also did get this one signed by Alex. And it was lovely to see her. I don't know if I've ever met her before, so that was nice to meet her. I really liked the first book in this series, but I will probably save this one for fall time because the first book did have like a creepy Halloween vibe that I loved, so I'm kind of guessing that this one also does as well. I'm also excited by how thick this one is. Like it looks like a decently long book and middle grade books are not often that long, so I'm excited about it. And then the last book that I got signed is one that I actually didn't know about until the day of BookCon day one. I was hanging out with Robbie from Robbie Reads, Ashley from Ashley Outpaged, and Ashley from A Dash of Ash, and we were walking the show floor and there was these books. It's called Running with Lions by Julian Winters, and Ashley was telling me that it's like the foxhole court, or people are comparing it to the foxhole court because it's sports and boys. Anything that is compared to the foxhole court, y'all know. I'm gonna try. So this one is out already. You can already go get yourself a copy. But because Robbie is like besties with the author, I did get to get it signed, which was really nice because the author's signing wasn't till later. And I hate asking authors to sign things when they're not like officially signing. So it was really, really nice of him to go ahead and sign our books. I'm excited to read this one. See if it's actually like the foxhole court. Ooh, is it hate to love? The next thing is not a book per se, it is a sampler, and it's a sampler for A Map of Days, which is the fourth Miss Peregrine's book by Ransom Riggs. I also got to get this one signed, which was really exciting because I didn't get tickets to Ransom Riggs signing, and then someone like had extra tickets and gave them to Jesse and I, which was just so cool. <laughs> but I'm really excited. Oh, Ginger. Hey, puppy, okay? He tripped over my legging kit, didn't you? Why don't you just lay down right here? Good girl. Ginger's hanging out with us now. Anyways, this is one of my all-time favorite series, but I don't talk about it very much because I haven't actually finished the third book in the series. I've been saving it because I knew that the fourth one was coming out. I felt like if I finished it, I would kind of go into withdrawal around like Halloween time. But now that I have this little sampler, it has just made me want to read the third book. So I don't think I'm going to be able to wait. I'll probably read it over the summer. I actually did get two of these as well, and I'm kind of not sure what to do with this one. I'll probably send it to a friend, but this one is not signed, just the one. Next I have some poetry books. I was wandering the floor on my own and I just stumbled across this booth that was filled with poetry books by the poet Sophia Elaine Hansen. So I picked up two of her books. When I stumbled upon the booth, Jenna was there in the booth taking pictures and stuff and she recommended them to me and I just trust Jenna's judgment. So I was like, okay. And I got to meet the author and I got to meet her publicist, I wanna say. So this one is called Hummingbird and this one is called Soul Like Thunder. I will probably pick up Hummingbird first because it is her older collection and then I will move on to Soul Like Thunder. Aw, I didn't know that this was signed. That's so exciting. This was another example of when like the author was hanging out, but I didn't want to ask her to sign my books because she wasn't signing books, but they're already signed. That's so sweet. These are also very beautifully illustrated, as you can see, and that is one of my favorite things about poetry is when it's paired with illustrations. So I'm excited to get into these. If any of you guys have read them, let me know down in the comments because I'd love to hear what some of you thought. Next, 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 next. I don't know why I'm singing so much today. It's just a mood. 
I got this arc of a graphic novel called Unicorn, no, Aquacorn Cove by Katie O'Neill. This is by the same person who did the Tea Dragon Society, which is one of my favorite art styles. I was talking to Ariel Bissette and she said that someone had like randomly given her this arc of a graphic novel and I got excited because I know Katie O'Neill from the Tea Dragon Society, so she very kindly just handed it over to me and let me have it, so I'm really excited to read this one. Let's see, when does this come out? This one also comes out in October 2018. But just look how gorgeous is this art style. I'm obsessed with it. It's full color. It's so pretty full. And then the other graphic novel I got is called Home After Dark by David Small. This one comes out in September. Yes. But honestly, I'm not sure if I'm going to read it. With arcs, they're not just like laying out for you to flip through. And I'm a little nervous that this one's gonna be creepy. I am such a wimp for creepy things. The art style does look really cool because it is this unique pencil sketch kind of thing. But I did get it signed by the author, so that was exciting. And hopefully I'll get in the mood for it and for something creepy. Okay, now you might think, that were done and that that was a decent amount of books and that Emma did a good job being picky and selective about what books she wanted and you would be right except we're not done <laughs> So Fierce Reads kindly invited us to this party and up until this point I feel like I was doing really well at like only picking up what I really wanted but then this happened. This is a goodie bag that Fierce Reads gave us filled with many books. So I am going to go through these. I'm going to start with the ones that I am most excited about. The first one is this King of Scars sampler. Isn't this the most beautiful sampler. The only other sampler that was this beautiful was Lee Bardugo's Language of Thorns sampler last year. Guys, this is Nikolai's book or like a chapter of it and I'm holding it in my hands and I'm getting so emotional. This is like my most anticipated release ever. Like I've been waiting for this since before it was a thing because Nikolai is my fave. He's bae. But yeah, they gave it to me and I love Fierce Reads for giving me this. This is like the first couple chapters of the Nikolai thing and usually with samplers I kind of make myself promise that I won't read it but I know I'm gonna give in. I'm totally gonna read this one and then when the book comes out I'll probably regret it because I'll get two chapters in and then I'll want more but I have to wait a really long time. The next thing that Fierce Reads gave to us that I'm so excited for. I mentioned this in my book expo vlog which is already up if you want to watch it. They gave us Check Please Book One by Ngozi Ukazu. Ukazu? This comes out in September. It is an arc of the webcomic Check Please. So Check Please is out online. You can go read it but they're publishing them in physical copies in full color. I'm so excited to read this. Honestly, I'm probably gonna start it and finish it today. Check Please is another thing that is often really compared or suggested to people who like the foxhole court. It is about hockey players and I think that the main character is like very much so a cinnamon roll. Am I right about that? I know it's going to be one of those things that I'm obsessed with, but I haven't started it because I do have a really hard time reading graphic novels and manga in e-form but now I have it in physical form and I'm so excited. I just can't wait to get into the story and for all of these characters to become my children. Yeah. Okay now a lot of these arcs I don't know much about because I didn't pick them out myself they were just given to us by Fierce Reads. The first book that I have here is Blanca and Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. This one is one that I probably will read pretty soon. This sounds really interesting. It is about these two sisters who have always been rivals. One is obedient and graceful and the other is vicious and manipulative. Their family is kind of tied to these swans and so they know that one day the swans will pull them into a dangerous game that will leave one of them trapped in the body of a swan and it sounds like it has to do a lot with like fate it sounds kind of fairy tale esque so i am really excited to read this one whenever i next get in the mood for fantasy next i have the boneless mercies by april genevieve 
I don't know how to say this last name. This one is a gender swapped retelling of Beowulf, which sounds really cool. It sounds like it is a fantasy, it has to do with kingdoms. I don't know much else about it because I'd only vaguely heard of this before they gave it to us, but it does sound interesting just by the fact that it is gender swapped Beowulf. Anytime anything is a retelling but gender swapped, I'm in, I'm down, I'm interested, I want to know more. The next three I'm going to go through kind of quickly because I honestly do not know what they are about. The first one is We Were Buried by Kate A. Borman and this one comes out February 2019. Then I have Unclaimed Baggage by Jen Dahl and this one comes out September 2018. And then I have A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney and this one also comes out September 2018. In other news, they gave us some really cool I Believe in a Thing Called Love pins, which is a book by Maureen Gu, and I have read it, and I really liked it, so I think this is so cute. One of them says, all's fair in love and Korean dramas. <laughs> and this one says, I fail at flirting, but excel at reading. Me. All right, I've been filming for so long, and we're still not done. Next, I went to another event called the Novelty, and they also gave us some nice goodies. They gave us this cute tote bag that says, booked all week, and it's very novel aesthetic if you follow novel like on their Instagram and social media. It very much so matches the aesthetic, which I appreciate. Part of what novel has given us has not come in the mail yet because they shipped it straight to us, but I'll give you a little spoiler. There's a Dear Evan Hansen arc coming, and I'm so excited. But what we got at the event were two very exciting things. The first one is Frostblood by Ellie Blake. This one is not an arc, it is already out, so if you would like to read it, you can go get it. The author, Ellie Blake, was at the event and we got to hear her talk a little bit about the series, and she said it was very much so Avatar The Last Airbender inspired. Like, she made us raise our hands who had a crush on Zuko, so yeah. It is also a fantasy, and unlike Avatar The Last Airbender, instead of four elements, there are two elements. So you are either a frost blood or a fire blood. I like the covers. I think they're very nice and shiny. The next thing is one of the books I'm most excited about from Book Expo, and I haven't even read the first book in the series. It is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This one I got to get personalized. We also got to hear Lainey Taylor talk. We also got to see them talk about like the process of making these covers, which was really exciting and cool, or at least I thought it was. Like I said, I have not read Strange the Dreamer, but after hearing Lainey Taylor talk about it, it encouraged me to pick it up soon. So it's definitely going to be one of my summer reads, and then I'll probably pick this one up like right after I read Strange the Dreamer. And this one comes out on October October 18th as well. I really am close to being done, I promise. <laughs> the last couple things are not necessarily books, but I did get some cool swag and merch that I wanted to share, so I'm gonna do that. First of all is what I have it all gathered in, which is this Harry Potter tote bag. Look how cool this is. We like specifically planned out when they were dropping these tote bags because we all wanted them so much. If you don't know, Brian Selznick is doing the 20th anniversary covers of Harry Potter. I got to get a poster signed by him. I'll try and show it to you guys, but it is really long. Look how cool! And his signature is down here. So this is like all the covers of the books put together, which I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. It is possible I am going to hang it up in my room because it's so pretty and I love Brian Selznick's illustration style so, so much. So the tote bag also has one of his illustrations on the cover, in case I didn't say that already. I also got another poster. This one came with the Fierce Reads swag that I already showed and this one is for Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I haven't actually read that book so I'm not positive but I'm pretty sure this is for Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Look at all these cool people. They also gave us this poster for Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, which again, I haven't read, but going to Book Expo and seeing her at the Fierce Reads party made me bump it up my TBR just a little bit. The next thing that I have, I just like randomly picked up off a table on one of the graphic novel booths, and it's this postcard of one of the doctors from Doctor Who. I just thought it was so well drawn. Like, look at that. That is so cool. I'm probably gonna add that to my wall somewhere. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about this. The next thing is one of my fave things that I got this whole week. This Wondrous Society official member pin. If you don't know, 
This is from the book Nevermore, which I actually just posted my review for. I finished it right before my trip to New York and I love it. It's one of my faves. And so when I heard that they were dropping these Wondrous Society pins, I knew that I had to get one in the book when you become part of the Wondrous Society, you get one of these pins. So now I just feel like I'm so cool because I have one. I've made it into the Wondrous Society, guys. Oh, I think this is a really important part of my haul. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> this was like a random crown that they were giving out for Nikolai swag and I kept it because I'm just that sentimental. The last couple things I mostly got at Kinokuniya. I had been talking with my friend Ashley from Ashley Outpaged for like months about going to Kinokuniya together when we were in New York for book con. I think it was one of the first things we ever talked about when we became friends because she had never been and she loves manga so I was so excited. We actually got to go twice together. I did take some vlog footage of that which will be up in my book con vlog which will be up on Monday. We decided to buy the same manga so that we could buddy read it together. We got volume one of the series called Imperfect Girl. The cover for this actually looks really weird, but the rest of the covers are really pretty. I'm not sure why this one looks like a horror manga, so I'm pretty sure it is not a horror manga. It actually sounds like it is in a similar vein of like Your Name or Studio Ghibli type stuff. It is about this boy who is a writer or becomes a writer and I think the manga kind of tells the story of a girl that he met who he says that he would not have become a writer without whatever happened between them. You can see on the back what the actual aesthetic is like. I don't know why the cover of this one is like this because the rest of the covers are beautiful. So we got that and we're gonna buddy read it once we're not both so so busy. Next I got this Hell's Moving Castle little postcard which I think Ashley also got the same one so we pretty much got matching stuff. This is definitely going to be added to my memory wall. It's so so cute. I love it. And then I just got another journal of my faves. It's MD Paper or Midori might be the brand. It's a Japanese brand and I always pick one up when I'm in Kinokuniya so that I have an extra one on hand. And finally, this is totally not book related but I had to just include it in this haul. <laughs> I got the BTS Love Yourself Tear album and I got version O. The first day that I got into New York City, I hung out with Monica and Elena and Alexandra from Twirling Pages and we had so much fun, but we also just popped into Koreatown to go to Choreo Books and I picked up this. I picked the black and white version. This one is my fave of all the versions. It's version O because I know many of you are going to ask, even though I said that it was version O, it is version O. If you didn't hear me, it's version O. I'm hoping that that is everything that I got during my book expo book con week. Like I said at the beginning, it was a lot of fun. It was so nice just to be with people. Like you talk to these booktubers all the time or you see their social media posts, you watch their videos, but it's just so much fun to be all together for like a whole week and then get all these exciting books. Definitely like the busiest week of my year of my life but totally worth it for all the good memories. I'm so sad now that it's over. I'm already looking forward to next year. Let me know down in the comments if you went to BookCon and what your favorite part was. I loved getting to meet those of you that I met and give you guys some stickers because I had stickers to give out and that was really fun. I hope that you have a lovely day or night or afternoon wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever you are reading, and I will see you in my next video.